Hi, this is Ms. Bahawk. Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast, where you can get fresh ideas for your training, nutrition, and lifestyle to immediately put to use. Listen in with Marcus Philly, the creator of Functional Bodybuilding, and myself. Hi, I'm Marcus Philly, and we're broadcasting from Revival Strength in San Rafael, California. We'll be talking about avoiding burnout, keeping your passion alive for training, and fueling your body and mind so you can look good, move well now, and for years to come. Do you sit down to eat breakfast or grab a shake and go? In this episode, we discuss the ins and outs of liquid nutrition for meal replacement, nutrient supplementation, and weight loss or gain. Learn when to choose to chew and be mindful of how you nourish yourself throughout the day. Um, liquid nutrition. I know I've heard you talk about this a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but... Uh, there, there's a lot of nuances I feel like that go with this topic, right? Mm-hmm. That I, I think would be helpful to explore. Okay. Um, like diving into who it might be right for, when it's right, what are some of the things you have to look out for when you're, you know, consuming shakes and, and smoothies and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember recording like a Revive RX video with you yeah. like la- over about a year and a half ago uh-huh. where this was one of the the questions that I might have had for you. And, and I liked where it was going, so I would love to yeah. expand on that. Cool. Well, I mean, um, without really like a total blueprint of how we should cover this topic, I think the first thing to talk about is like, where has liquid nutrition come up in our lives? Like, have you experimented with any liquid nutrition, liquid diets, uh, anything like that? I don't know if I've done like all liquid, but yeah, there's been times where... Um, you know, I did uh, the Joe Rogan Hulk load shake. Okay, what, where, what is that? <laughs> oh man, dude, it's gnarly. It's um, it's like four stalks of celery. Okay. Two to four bunches of like handfuls of, of kale, one whole cucumber. Uh, I used to put one avocado in there. Uh, a f- uh, uh, ginger that is like the size of a key fob, and four cloves of garlic. And I think there were maybe one or two other things, but you blend that up and, and down it. And I, I did that for several months. And for me, I think it was like the mental part of like downing that mm-hmm. and seeing myself being able to do it after a couple of weeks and being like, wow, this feels really good that I'm getting this in. Yeah. And I know like in terms of gut health and stuff, it was it's not like it was just completely terrible. It was like there's some benefit to it, but that was like my one long stint of exposure to it. And then I'm sure, I guess, if you would consider liquid nutrition, like protein shakes and things like that, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the past, I've certainly experimented with adding things to protein shakes and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's break those down into like, what was, what what would you say like the overall purpose of like the, the Hulk shake? Hulk that, load shake. The Hulk load shake was. <laughs> For me, I guess it was, uh, at, the, at the time, I wasn't getting enough greens or enough vegetables just in general throughout my day. So it seemed like uh, an in to being able to start to introduce that okay, to my so, body. So it was like a micronutrient supplementation op- option. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the protein shakes are, you know, that's supplementing your, you know, macronutrient protein. So in like what what context would you use that uh i was probably doing them after workouts but i think the one time that i'm thinking of where i did add a lot more things to it like i added peanut butter and and all this random stuff into the shake uh at the time i was using that as kind of a meal replacement too so it was like breakfast for example where i just like i wasn't i wasn't being consistent with like making stuff and whatnot and instead of missing breakfast I was like well this is an easier way for me to get it in right now right so meal replacements micronutrient supplementation macronutrient supplementation um anything else you can think of oh you talk about after training so that's like a performance enhancement Mm -hmm. kind of option yeah so and I wonder if one more is uh would be considered like a a detox thing Uh, what, what is the um that cleanse yeah that that's cleanse. popular the near well the near cleanse the is something cleanse. That we've done yeah. yeah so i don't know if that would fall in this category but maybe that's another uh, yeah. purpose yeah we've got so we've got 
<laughs> let's review. We've got cleanses. We should definitely cover that. We've got, you know, uh, uh, post-workout kind of uh, sports performance supplementation, liquid liquid nutrition. We've got like meal replacements. Um, got micronutrient supplementation. People getting in their greens, um, and then probably in there is somebody who's like doing weight loss or weight gain. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to drink liquid for weight loss. I'm going to drink liquid for weight gain. And so if really just generally it's like liquid nutrition is when you're consuming, you know, micronutrients, macronutrients, calories through liquid form, as opposed to getting it from food. And that kind of maybe encapsulates what we're, we're covering with, with this. Um, so I think the first thing to kind of talk about is like, all right, well, what is the, um, you know, how are we designed to get calories and get energy? Uh, what was our evolutionary process? You know, we developed a GI tract um, and a mouth with teeth <laughs> because the calories that exist in nature, for the most part, aside from some, f- from, from like certain fruits that have uh, like actual like milk in them or liquid, like I'm thinking of coconut or something like that, um, comes in like, you know, f- you know, some form that requires mastication or chewing. Right, so chewing to get to ex- to help start extracting nutrients, which then delivers the food into your, you know, stomach, and then into your small intestine and your large intestine before you poop it out. Right, and that's the process by which we get the the micronutrients, we get the fats, we get the proteins, we get the carbs. Um, that's how we're built. So when we, uh, and that's also a process that's been ev- refined for millions of years, right? It's, it's pretty good at what, it, what it's supposed to do if we do it correctly. And correctly is chewing your food a lot of times, mixing it with your saliva, swallowing it, taking another bite, doing the same thing, right? Um, but, but all of that generally gets bypassed when we use liquid nutrition. People will consume a lot of calories in a really fast amount of time by just letting it bypass the chewing process bypass the part where it actually sits in your mouth for a period of time and then they just swallow it so um that's that's one consideration when i think about like liquid nutrition like why why would we want to bypass like our the process that we were designed for to extract nutrients from food um because you're not going to absorb and you're not going to get as many nutrients out of that food if it's blended up versus, you know, eaten whole. So if you could actually sit there and eat two big bunches of, you know, sautéed kale and, you know, roasted celery and your ginger and garlic and all those things, if you sat down and you made a big plate of that and you sat down and chewed it and swallowed it and chewed and swallowed it, you know, the, the opportunity for the actual gut benefits, nutritional benefits are a lot higher than if you blend it up and you just swig it down. One, it's going to maintain, like some more of the fiber is going to maintain and you're going to be able to get that into your system. You're going to have a lot of the, uh, digestion process starts in the mouth with your salivary amylase that's the enzyme that's going to break down carbohydrates you also are going to be spending time chewing that that chewing you know begins the process of releasing some of the nutrients and it also gives enough time for this feedback loop of your brain to tell you when you're full and tell you how much nutrients you're getting and what what you need and you still have an appetite for certain things um so you know there's that initial drawback that I always think of. I think, okay, well, it's not as good to uh, blend a banana with some orange juice than to eat half a banana and five slices of orange. It's just not the same. Um, what are your thoughts on that? No, I, <clears throat> I totally agree. I mean, it seems like uh, chewing it and eating it is the most preferable method to getting something in i mean i think of um 
realistically though thinking of a population who let's say like level one right is like let's go back to the breakfast example not eating breakfast Mm -hmm. like not eating anything um level five is like sitting down eating a really protein rich like like a really good meal Mm -hmm. and and taking the time to chew and and consume it by actually eating it there's like a big gap between that level one and level five that i think for a lot of people um I think that it could be potentially, uh, maybe it's a shorter term solution, yeah. but it's it's an easier way to get something in and to start to get in the habit of, okay, I can do this. This doesn't feel like it's as high barrier yeah. as, yeah, yeah, as yeah. level five. Um, so that, that kind of comes to mind. But yeah, I guess it's, you know, knowing, I totally do agree with the fact of like, yeah, of course we want to chew our food and take our time with it. And anytime you have the opportunity to do so, that's kind of the go to yeah yeah i think it's um i wanted to present that part of it first to say like that's not the ideal way to consume your your food your calories it's um and there are a few specific examples where that's we can make an exception and we'll talk about that because i think if people um have been fed this information for a long time it's like hey if you blend up this smoothie of berries and this and that and yogurt and like you're good to go It's like, well, no, actually you're not. I mean, that's not the end goal. We should still continue to try and evolve people in their food and lifestyle practices towards optimal. And that's perhaps better than what they're doing currently. Um, But is it, you know, level five, like you just said, you know, the arbitrary level five, right? Yeah. Um, So I, I just want, I just want that to be, you know, in people's awareness, right? okay, I finally started doing shakes for breakfast. I'm good. I got that figured out. And it's like you do for the time being, and that might be a a good step in the right direction, but eventually we want to get you to chewing, you know, some lean protein for breakfast, get a little fat in your system and start your day that way. Um, Plus, by the way, like when you consume liquid calories and you drink them fast, it has a much different uh, impact on your blood you know your your blood chemistry your you know your the blood your blood sugar levels uh you know your free triglycerides whatever you know you may be absorbing from that again your body is this like intricate system of like sensors and signals and hormone pathways and um so you know if you get overwhelmed with like a lot of sugar protein from a drink that you consume really fast that had 600 calories in it that your body didn't have to digest very much um that could change kind of your energy throughout the day and your focus and your hormone rhythms um which which is what we're aiming to actually control with our food consumption you know we're looking to try and get people to have consistent energy sustained energy sustained focused uh and that can be impacted so greatly from chewing your food and having the right types of foods in your meals um and if you drink it it's hard to have control over that. It's hard to know exactly how your body's going to absorb and react. Um, so I think for, you know, um, let's say the person who's like, well, let's go through some of those examples that we started with. Um, you've got your person that's doing meal replacements, right? Okay, well, that's kind of what we just talked about. It's like, why are you replacing a meal? You know, because you haven't yet created the lifestyle habit to prepare that meal to sit down to chew it, to make time in your schedule for, you know, the priority of, of nourishing yourself. Cause that's, that's really what we're doing. It's like you, yeah. People are like, Oh, how many meals a day do I have to eat? It's like, how many times a day do you want to nourish yourself? Like change the, the mentality around that. This isn't just like, I got to eat this thing. It's like, no, this is an opportunity to change how you feel for the next three to eight hours. Are you just trying to get it done or do you want to like be thoughtful and mindful about how it feels when it goes down and how you feel on the other end of it? You know, if you've got 15 waking hours in a day and you end up spending seven or eight of them kind of feeling tired, loss of focus, crummy, you're got bad digestion, like more than half your waking life, you're just kind of succumbing to poor nutritional habits and and here you're looking for a quick way to get a meal down with a replacement of a shake. And it's like, let's remember that we're, we're aiming to step up from that. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of, of shakes as meal replacements 
or liquid nutrition as meal replacements. Um, I'm a little bit more comfortable with talking about liquid nutrition as sort of a, a bridge between like good solid meals in the, in the, like some of the other examples, like someone who's like looking to gain weight, uh, you know, like they need to get in some additional calories. We work with athletes. We work with people that, you know, have a really hard time putting on lead mass, um, despite eating quality meals throughout the day they just haven't they aren't able to do that um because they have high metabolism they work really demanding jobs um and in those cases using liquid nutrition can be a way to help them get a little extra energy in um i think from a the sports performance standpoint using like liquids post-workout is as a way to get calories and get macronutrients into your system quickly is something that I believe strongly in. I think that, um, you know, for the same reasons I said, that's not ideal for like general consumption of calories and, and for your meals, uh, liquids digest really fast and they get into your system and your bloodstream quickly. And that can make it hard to manage your blood sugar and your appetite and your energy levels and your focus right after you train is when you want that to happen. You really want to get those liquid nutrients, nutrients uh, excuse me you want to get those nutrients into your bloodstream fast and so liquid nutrition supplementation with a protein shake um, protein carb shake after training is also you know really advantageous um, I think somebody who's looking to get more micronutrients into their life like what you're talking about with the the Hulk load shake um, you know I'm 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 not totally opposed to it but not in the absence of that stuff showing up in your actual food right if you eat you know potatoes and you know steak for four meals a day and then you think you can just drink a big old shake of you know kale and that's going to be sufficient to you know get your your greens in for the day unfortunately that's not going to be okay you're going to run into some issues with uh, digestion and uh micronutrient consumption, um, fiber intake in your diet. But, um, you know, somebody who is relatively conscious of that, you know, who's eating vegetables at their meals and wants to have, you know, a, a cucumber, kale, avocado juice, you know, with some lemon in it because of the benefits that they feel like it gives them on their gut and pH balance or they want to get some extra micronutrients or they like drinking that instead of a coffee because it makes them feel alert. Like I'm all for that. Um, but again, that's that you, s you hear how that's like a mm -hmm. supplement to a proper, proper diet. <clears throat> Just to jump in, same thing. Would you say, uh, with let's say a supplement, cause there's so many out there, right. That are like, you've got athletic greens, you've got Organifi, whatever their thing is. You've got, um, greens first, mm -hmm. right. Which we sell here. Like, that seems to have just a concentrated dose of like a bajillion different things yeah. that you may, uh, yeah, even if you're eating vegetables throughout the day, like the variance of things that are in there, you, you may not get all of that in, in one serving. Mm -hmm. And so that gives you a way to be able to take that in. It would, would this fall in the same category where it's like, okay, if you, if you do a greens first shake of some sort, yeah. that, that can't be your only source of greens. Like you want to be having it throughout the day as well. Right. Right. Well, you know this too, Ms. But it's like when we're going to consult with somebody on nutrition, you know, what's the first thing we ask them? Like, Hey, we don't, we don't say like, Hey, what are all the supplements you take? No, we say like, what'd you have for breakfast? You know, what'd you have for lunch? We don't even have a conversation about supplements until you know, phase three of, you know, nutrition protocol changes for clients um, because that's what they are. They're supplements. And a greens first supplement is a supplement. We sell it here as a supplement. I mean, it's, you know, the, it's marked under the product category and our <laughs> accounting system is supplement um, for a reason. You know, it's, it is one of those things where it's like, okay, if, if somebody is, I think it's a great insurance policy. I think it's a great thing to be adding to, I, I take it daily, you know, I take it partly for the micronutrients that I can get from it. I take it also because it's the first thing I put in my body every morning as like a, a pH, uh, you know, balance in my gut as well as something that's going to help 
get some enzymes in my digestive system working because I'm going to have some food shortly after. Um, but that that was not the first thing I did. It was like, you know, ensure that I'm eating adequate vegetables at three of my meals every day, that there's a variety to them, that they're not the same ones every day for the whole year because then I'm missing some micronutrients, but they rotate with the seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where that fits in for sure. And And would you say your preferred, like versus so you you taking let's say a greens first supplement right mm-hmm. if we're talking supplements versus you making a version of the hulk load shake right or like yeah, making yeah, yeah. your own i want to put this in and that in is the greens first or any green supplement for you preferred because of how many things that are kind of in there it's more of just like a convenience factor Got it. you know it's something that i take daily that i know has like a wide variety of fruits and vegetables it tastes good to me, um, which it makes it more likely that I'm actually going to use it uh, versus like the Hulk load shake. It's like, oh, I kind of have to choke it down. Oh, I feel like proud that I could choke it down. And then one day you're like, yeah, I'm tired of choking <laughs> yeah. it down, you know, that kind of thing versus like a greens first where I look forward to that each day. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's really, you know, it's a matter of like what's going to make it consistent. Because any of these things that you may do, it's totally not worth it to just do it a couple times and then give up on it. It's like, so what's going to make this this very specific purposeful action of drinking a greens drink or drinking a, you know, a, a calorically dense weight gainer, what's going to make you do it every, every time um, so that you can actually see a change, right? I mean, that's part of why I believe so much in Revive RX Recover is that it's got great nutrients in it it tastes really really good and it's something that if somebody starts to use and they continue to use it on a consistent basis which they need to in order to experience the results from it and the benefits they'll actually have a better chance of getting there right it's like Mm -hmm. oh it tastes so good that they want to take it every day for the next three months and then after three months they're like whoa you know i put on three to four pounds of lean muscle mass by just changing this one thing in my diet um so similarly with like greens first, it's like I take that every day for, you know, a couple of years now. And I know how it feels to take it when I start my day. And I know how it feels to not take it when I start my day. Um, and this, by the way, isn't a plug for any particular supplements. It's just, it's about like, understand the purpose of this. Understand that food is always the best place to get your nutrients from. Chewing your food, sitting down to eat it. Um, make sure that whatever you're choosing to do is consistent enough to actually create an effect. And that if you're a person that's starting at level zero and we want to get you to level five, that some of these can be st- like, you know, baby steps to get there. Um, I know one of our clients and f- mutual friends, uh, Lisa Rendich, is somebody who, uh, I, I, she probably still does. She does. She does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this has been like years. And this woman uh, drinks a shake every morning, you know, and it's <laughs> probably been mostly the same for as long as I've known her, which is like close to seven years now. Um, you know, and it's like there are going to be exceptions to the to the rule, and she makes it work. And just, would it be better if she chewed her food and had like a regular breakfast every morning? Yes. But she's got two kids she has got a busy life she's a coach you know she coaches fitness she's active and this has been something that has worked for her um and so she's beyond the point of like oh well you know she's just trying something out and it's not gonna like she's created consistency in it um let's see some areas where i think that oh let's talk about the cleanse yeah so there's uh there's 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 a prescription that we go you know we give to some clients uh you know uh, basically a a recommendation on how to take a break you know from your daily routine of eating um you know chewing we i just talked about how great it is it's like chewing and digesting food is so important to like extracting nutrients it's also extremely energy costly you know if you think about the one muscle that you've used every day for your whole life unless somebody out there has done a fast you know, it's your small intestine. You've eaten something every day for your whole life. Maybe some people have done fasts or they've gone away from food for 24 hours, 48 hours, but um, you're constantly working that muscle every day. And, you know, if you trained your bicep every day for years, like it would welcome a break, you know, a rest, a one week rest, a three day rest. 
and that's exactly what we're, you know, what we're aiming to do with the liquid uh, fast. So the Nira cleanse, uh, the Master cleanse, Juice cleanse, that, those types of things where you just drink some energy for a period of, you know, three to seven days, let's say. The goal of that energy is to give your brain and your kidneys and, and your internal organs enough energy to process out, you know, any uh, fluid, toxins, lactic acid that's going to start to, you know, basically process through your kidneys and you're going to pee out. Um, but you basically take a week off of using your small intestine and, and the chewing and the digestive functions of the, of the body, which is a huge rest and it's a huge reset. And so that's one area that we will use liquid, you know, kind of liquid fasting in a sense. Um, but where areas where I think it's been, um, misuse or I would be really cautious of using it is, uh, you know, a couple times in my life I've done like long, like maybe two to four week liquid protein shake diets, oh, yeah. which, which led to some really dramatic fat loss. Um, but I think, and I've done, and that's, I know I've had clients that have done that before and I just am really wary of it because the, the speed at which people lo can lose fat doing something like that um, sets them up for a whole host of problems later. You know, your body stores a lot of toxins in fat um, cells in your body. So, for example, like you would eat like <clears throat> um, you would ha sorry you would drink uh, f five protein shakes a day, and you know like maybe some flax seeds in there or something like that, and uh, you know, with water and, and that would be it. So you're getting a lot of protein, which helps s sustain and maintain muscle mass. You still do some resistance training, but you're pretty much on a low calorie diet, no carbs. So you, you know, can get into ketosis pretty quickly. Um, and your body just starts to burn off fat. Um, it, and it takes a certain individual that can sustain that, you know, it's, you know, it's really difficult to do for any length of time. But if you if you are successful in sticking to it, you, you can drop a bunch of body fat pretty quickly, and um, which aesthetically people feel like oh that was great. But the back end of that is that you know you, you 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 give up all this body fat in a short amount of time. Your body has all this all these toxins and uh, uh, things that have been stored in those body fat cells. Those get released, and then your organs and your body now has to deal with all that that's floating around if, if you're a really over fat person that starts on a liquid diet like that and you drop a bunch of body fat you know your organs were already stressed out to begin with because they're supporting such heavy you know weight relative to your body size and now they have all these toxins that they have to deal with um and so what can end up happening is that people just they go into some sort of like uh post fat loss stress cycle which can and most often you know, ends with them putting it all back on mm. and, uh, none of the benefits, you know, to a slow and steady fat loss approach are gained. And instead it's just, it can actually leave them worse off in the end. So, um, I would just be really cautious of that. Um, having experimented with it myself in the past when I was in my like twenties, uh, not a good situation to be a part of. Got it. Uh, does that cover all the different categories? I think so. I mean, unless it, the weight gainer out there, I mean, you know, we got one of our coaches on staff who needed to bulk up a little bit to get stronger. That's she was that became a, 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 per, a performance goal of hers, um, which meant putting on some, you know, putting on some muscle mass. And so on top of like eating consistent meals, like, you know, she was doing like a, you know, she's calling it her gain shake, but like something in the morning that was just calorically dense, you know. Um, if, if we asked her, you know, it was quality nutrients that she was putting in there. It was kind of a thick shake that she was like kind of chewing a little bit. So it's like, okay, I'm getting in these calories in a little bit easier form than just eating, but it's still a liquid, you know, and I'm still, but it's thick enough that I can kind of do a little chewing of it in my mouth to like start that enzymatic breakdown of the carbohydrates that are in there. So... But other than that, man, yeah, I think we nailed it. We covered it. I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It was fun. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for listening, guys. Yeah. Send us your stories about liquid nutrition that you guys have, you have had. And maybe I'll tell that story of Amir, my uh, 
my college buddy who, uh, oh my God, he, he was always on a gains program. Like he was 24 <laughs> seven gains program. <laughs> and he, he used to put in the, in the frat house that he lived in. He had like this, like the blender in the kitchen. It was like raw oats, ice cream, milk, and then whatever <laughs> fruit they had. And it was like, like a, you know, 1500 calorie bomb. And he would just be like walking around drinking that all day. He's like, I'm getting huge. And I'm like, you're getting <laughs> fat, bro. <laughs> so fat. <laughs> Oh God! I hope, I hope Amir or Armon are listening to this and they remember that. That was funny. Oh God! Wonder if they're still doing it. <laughs> Amir might be. And he actually got into dentistry, dental surgery. He probably realized how bad that was for his teeth, and he's like off of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sugar, just kind of like bathing his teeth in sugar all day. <laughs> oh man, that's intense. So intense. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for listening, guys. Yeah. See you guys next time.